Hello everyone and welcome again to Minimalist Gourmet, where today I'll be teaching you how to make the southern staple of buttermilk fried chicken. That's right, this crispy, juicy, and absolutely delicious recipe is dead simple to make and I'm going to teach you how. Let's get started. I'll be using chicken breasts in my recipe today, however thighs, drumsticks, and wings work fantastic, so go ahead and pick your favorite cut of chicken. You can go as simple as salt and pepper for the seasoning, but I like to use a spice blend. It's a great way to get a lot of bang for your buck, and if you'd like, you can make your own. I've included a recipe in the description below to get you started, and you can adjust it based upon your tastes from there. However, whatever seasoning you're deciding to use, you're going to want to be very generous and make sure to coat your meat completely in the seasoning. You'll see why here in a little bit. You're going to season your chicken as well as the buttermilk with this, so do not be shy and make sure to get in there and cover every surface. Rub it in really well so that everything is seasoned throughout. Your properly seasoned chicken should look a little bit like this. Now next we're going to cover this with enough buttermilk to make sure that everything is submerged. By soaking it in buttermilk, this will moisturize, tenderize, and flavorize your chicken. So just make sure that everything is covered well with the buttermilk, and I like to pull the pieces up to make sure that nothing sticks to the bottom and all sides are equally coated with buttermilk. Cover with a tight-fitting lid and store in the refrigerator. You want to allow this to marinate for a minimum of four hours. However, if you do have the time, overnight would be so much better and do nothing but good for this dish. It's the next day, and my chicken has been marinating for about 12 or 14 hours. I pulled it out of the fridge about half an hour ago to come up to room temperature while I make my dredge. To begin my dredge, I'm going to start with about a cup, cup and a quarter of all-purpose flour. In order to get a beautifully golden brown, light and crispy exterior on our fried chicken, we're going to add about a quarter to a third of a cup cornstarch to our dredge mixture here. These two starches behave very differently when cooked, so it really is a great idea to use a mixture here if you want that one-two punch to knock your fried chicken up to the next level. Of course, we need to season our dredge, and I'll be using a bit more of my spice blend that I use to season my chicken. You can use your favorite spice blend or the one that I've included in the description below. However, at a minimum, you must add at least salt and pepper to this. If it's under-seasoned in the pan, it'll be under-seasoned on the plate. I like to add a very generous amount of seasoning, and remember guys, you can taste your dredge mixture here and adjust seasoning as needed. Give your dredge mixture a nice stir and make sure that all the spices and seasonings are equally distributed throughout. Grab out your chicken pieces and allow them to drain thoroughly. You want all the excess buttermilk mixture to drip off before you place it into the dredge mixture. If you skip this step, then the likelihood of your coating coming off later after frying are a lot higher. So take your time here and allow them to drain well. When making this style of fried chicken, I really like to make sure that there is a very thick coating of dredge on all surfaces. So do not be shy at this stage. Really press it in, pack on that dredge, and make sure to press it in very, very well to all surfaces. My motto is that the only bald spot allowed in this kitchen is going to be on my head. Once all your surfaces are coated very well in flour, your chicken should look like this. Now, gently give a nice little shake to free any loose flour before sitting it on a plate or wire rack and allow it to sit at room temperature for at least 15 minutes. This 15 minute wait is imperative because it gives a chance for that dredge mixture to hydrate completely and create a beautiful crust on the chicken that will tend not to fall off later when cooking. If you skip this step, the likelihood of your crust coming off after cooking is a lot higher. Of course guys, when doing this at home, use one hand for the dry mixture and one hand for the wet mixture. I had to keep one hand free to operate my camera, so now that's why I've got the dreaded club hand. I've preheated cooking oil in my pan to about 315, 320 degrees. It's critical that if you're frying this chicken, you use a lower temperature, especially if you're using larger bone-in pieces. Okay, this likes to cook a little bit lower and a little slower than regular fried chicken, so just take your time. You do not want to rush it and burn your chicken. Gently place your pieces of chicken in your pan, laying them away from you to avoid any splashes. Now if you notice, that dredge mixture on the outside has absorbed a lot of moisture and created a very nice crust. That's exactly why we waited for that 15 minutes before we fried. Do not skip this step. These chicken breasts are fairly thin, so I'm going to allow them to cook for about 3-4 to four minutes on this first side. They should look beautiful, golden brown and delicious on this first side before we give them a flip. 
It is somewhat difficult to give you an exact time on how long you should cook them because it really depends on how hot your oil is, how thick your pieces are, whether they have bones or not. So you need to learn the techniques here to judge this by eye. Okay, when you see a nice golden brown texture like this and things are coming up to temperature in a nice pace, that's what you're looking for. If you're cooking larger pieces of bone in chicken, this will absolutely take longer, so just take your time. Also, don't hesitate to use a thermometer. You're looking for 165 degrees internal temperature. After about seven or eight minutes total cooking time, this chicken is ready to pull. Gently drain it here in the pan before placing it onto a wire rack and allowing it to sit at room temperature for about four or five minutes before serving. That will allow this crust a nice time to set and it won't slough off when eating. If you're draining this on some paper towels instead of a wire rack, that's perfectly fine, but you do want to pull them off those paper towels after about two minutes so that it doesn't make your crust soggy. All there is left to do is enjoy this alongside some macaroni and cheese and collard greens. Guys, it really is just that simple to make this delicious buttermilk fried chicken at home tonight in your own kitchen. I want to thank each and every one of you watching for your time today. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you again here real, real soon on another episode of Minimalist Gourmet.